Hi crafters, it's Kathy from Scrap and Bean and I'm coming to you today from my craft room at home. I wanted to share with you what I've been doing a lot in my art journals lately. I've kind of been neglecting my scrapbooking and my paperwork and my housework and I just keep painting in my art journals because it is so darn fun. So I wanted to show you this background technique that I have been using a lot in my art journal to give you this kind of a little bit of a multicolored look, a little bit of a layered look, textured look. It's fun to do and really quite easy. I'll show you a few of the backgrounds that I've done at the end of the video. But here's my supply of, of paints because I'm just addicted to these chalk paints. They give you a really nice finish and great to layer other things on top of in your art journals. And especially when it comes to doodling or drawing, using gel pens, paint pens, um, on top of the chalk paint, they just work really well. I like that. Um, I, I prefer the chalk paints now that I've been in them. So I'm just going to pull out a few uh, possibly pastel colors today and show you how quick you can just watch me put together a quick background. So there's some light. Uh, this is even a lighter pink. Maybe I'll do both shades of pink. What the heck? And we just might need some white. A couple shades of green. Alrighty. So I'll put that all aside. My favorite tool is my brayer for putting these on with. So I'm going to pick a new page in my art journal. Next one I'm going to. So I often will get out my paints and just do some backgrounds in a variety of colors with no plan of what I'm going to do on the page. And somehow the colors end up speaking to me and I just find some inspiration in that and discover where I'm going to go after I've got color on. So I do keep in mind that the color I put down first is going to be end up being more of a background color, not my foreground. So I take my array of colors, I'll maybe set them out here so you can have a bit of an idea what I'm working with. And I'll take the one that I want to end up seeing probably the least. I'm going to take this stone color. I'm going to try and keep this background in kind of pastels and see what happens. So as you can see, I just put the paint out right onto my page and I'm just brayering it all over. I'm basically using this first layer to more or less cover my background just to get rid of that blank page look. And I may even take a paintbrush and get down into that crevice in the joint in the page there where my briar isn't isn't gonna reach it. I've found that I like to go horizontal and vertical. I do avoid going this way. I just find it starts getting a little bit too messy, so I keep my lines going perfectly opposite from each other. Now, I don't need to cover the entire page, every little last piece, but I am gonna try and get the bulk of it. And I'm just gonna slip a paper towel under the end there so that when I go right off, it's a little bit less likely to get onto my pages that I've already finished. So I'm just gonna keep bringing that until it's spread out as much as I can. So you may not be able to tell this on film, but this page here is very solid background because that's where the rest of my book is, my journal. This side, I don't really have a lot of support underneath it. So sometimes when I go to Brayer, I'll put my hand underneath it like that so that it's making good contact and it's not like your Brayer is trying to dip into this valley of pages. Uh, I also have been lately discovering the ease of working on your page if you actually remove it from your book. So here's one where I actually, it was in my book, my journal, art journal, and I removed it. So now I have this nice flat surface to work with. So that's um, been useful too if you don't like having to kind of work in the ditch. 
<laughs> in this ditch. Or if you don't like to have to uh, work on a page that's not on a flat surface. And maybe I'll just put a little bit more on this end. Now with this chalk paint, one beauty of it is that it dries really quite quickly. So I don't even bother with a heat gun. And you can see, I just keep rollering it out until briaring it, until it just doesn't move anymore. So it's dry enough that it's not gonna move. If I were to touch it, yes, I can pick it up on my finger. But in a couple more minutes, it's even gonna be dry off of there. I've got a piece of dried paint or something stuck in there. And even the paint that's on my briar, I just leave it. I just let it air dry and I switch on to my next color. So a little bit cool. And that's how you can tell that the paint is still wet. If you touch it and it's got a coolness to it, it's still, it's still a little bit damp, but that's okay. I'm just gonna move on to this mermaid blue. And I'm gonna put it on the same way. You can see how unscientific this is. Totally, right? There, there's my blue. Like how easy was that? And I'm gonna put a little bit of more blue way over here. This is a, a really cool art journal. I've moved into this long art journal and it just gives you a different size surface to work with and create on. So the little story that I can paint on my page changes because of the size that my page is. I started off with a journal where the each page was this size, but going the other direction. So more like a typical book. And then I moved on to the small journal. So you're we working on a small surface and I really like that too. That is mm, maybe, I don't know, it's kind of up there as a vote for a favorite for me. I like that size. But then I moved into this newer size and I'm really liking it because it just gives you this whole long, you can tell a story on it. More like a storyboard, it's awesome. Okay, so I wanna build up some other colors. I should put my lids down. What are we gonna put here? Maybe some green, or <laughs> I'm colorblind. This is pink, Kathy, it's pink. So I have two pinks here. I really like this pastel, and since I'm still kind of in the background, I'm gonna go with this a slightly brighter. It's still not very bright, but uh, some of it's going to get covered up, so my dark one's covered. From these colors, you can kind of tell I'm anxious for spring. <laughs> like the Easter Bunny and the chocolates and the lack of snow. Oh my gosh, I am so ready for spring. So depending on when you're watching this, you may not realize I'm filming this in the midst of a cold snap here in Alberta. Our our weather is 20 something. After it hits 25, it really doesn't matter anymore. It's just, it's just freezing. So it's, it's great weather to be painting inside. Okay, so there's some just randomness, right? Um, let's go with a green. And again, I'm gonna go a little bit of the darker green because I can put lighter colors on top of it. And let's do it in two spots. Actually, a good rule of thumb is to put your colors in three spots. Uneven numbers just seem to be very visually pleasing. Odd, odd numbers. That's a better way of saying it than uneven. Okay, so if you're giving up on this, don't quite yet. This is going through, this is going through the ugly stage and a lot of art journaling makes it into this ugly stage. But if you persevere, you know, as Seth after, I heard him saying, you can just be one step away from magic. Okay, so we're more than one step before we get to magic, but it'll come. Trust me, it will come. So as I get a little closer to the top, what are we gonna put on? Maybe a little bit of this glacier ice. Now we're getting into the real pastel colors. And 
And you could even do it with smaller patches than what I'm going here. There, and oh, I should, I should do a little bit on that page, just so the two pages are kind of tied together. Yeah, I'll put a little bit in that, a little closer to the crevice. I have used this color a lot. This is vanilla and I I love this paint color. So it's just about time for me to head on down to scrap and bean and get myself another bottle of it. Okay. I think I'm I think I'm done. So guess what? We're just not gonna use that color. Uh, I'll put on a little bit of lighter green, this guacamole. They have really fun names on this paint too, eh? And we'll do a little bit on this page here too. Might even be time for me to bring back my paintbrush. Should I do a little bit just so I have a different color? It's not all the same right in there. And then the rest of this, I'm just gonna roll it out. Oh yeah, there's like nothing left on there. Okay. And I have a little bit where I can still see that background page. I like it now that we're getting into the really light because for some reason these pastel spring colors are appealing to me. I think that's why because I'm just I'm longing for spring and sunshine and warm weather. Oh my gosh it's gonna be so nice. Um, I have a little patch up here I want to cover up. How about if I do a little bit of glacier ice that's what we need a little pastel -y. and maybe you'll even a little down here because I have a lot of colors showing through there more than what I want there see how we moved from having a little bit darker I mean obviously I didn't go with really dark colors because I knew I want to go with pastel but I have moved from a darker shade of the, the light colors. Okay, that's not a technical term. To now I've pushed them into the background so that I just have very pale colors on the top and I really like that. That's the look I'm going for on this one. I like it. But I do want to hide some more of that green because it's a little bit darker than what I want. So if I put a little bit too much pink there, I'll just roll some over here too. 
the difficult thing is, when do you stop layering, right? Okay, so the answer to that is, you stop layering when you've fallen in love with what your surface is. And it's getting pretty close. I like it, but I do feel like, um, I don't know, do I need a little bit, a little bit more color, a little bit more something, something, something showing. There, just needed a little bit of randomness there. I think, I think we're getting pretty close. Okay, a little bit of the actual page is showing through here in a couple of spots. And I do want to cover that up. So what color? I think I'm going to go with pink. Now this might be a little bit dark pink, but you know what? If it's a little too dark for me, I can go over it with a lighter color, can I? I'm really just trying to cover up the I really want yellow. I really want yellow and I don't have any left. And the craft store is 30 minutes away from me. So there we go. We're going to get some out of there. And I'm going to have some yellow on this page yet. Get my brayer as close to as I can as that seam. And I'm going to call it done. I kind of just don't like this little area right here. What can I do? A little bit more yellow, I think. How much more yellow can I get out of this jar? I should, uh, I'm going to leave it upside down for a while because you know what? I will get more yellow out of there. There we go. That's enough. And 
maybe up here because it's like a solid field of pink. Okay, I'm pretty much liking it. Maybe a little bit too much pink up there. Um, I'm actually gonna put a little bit, I think a little bit of white. You know what? I like it. I might have to put a an Easter spring scene on there, but I do like it. So I'm going to stop. That's when you know you need to stop. <laughs> 